Hello and welcome to a dev named Josh. I'm a dev named Josh and today we're going to create enemies that will chase the player around and we're going to uh, talk a little bit about arrays. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is actually make an enemy. Right now in our main level, if I come over to the 2D scene, we can see that we have our player character and that is it. So let's make a new uh, branch and then we'll save it as a scene. So I'm going to add a node, control A. And I'm going to say, let's make it another character body 2D. Um, we're not going to talk about actual nav mesh or anything in this video. We might talk about that later. But with this being kind of a beginner's uh, series, I don't want to focus on that. It's a little bit more complicated. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to change this to enemy. And we're going to make it very similar to the player. Okay, It's kind of a sprite, 2D. Uh, and it's going to have a collision shape 2D. And we're going to give that collision shape 2D a new circle shape. Okay, similar to how we made the player. For the sprite, you know we're going to use the icon, the Godot icon, down here. Uh, and then I'm going to go to visibility, and I'm going to go to modulate. And I'm going to change the color to red. Now he looks angry. Wonderful. Um, let me see. Do, do, do. I think that's it. Uh, real quick, we're going to change the collision shape size to match the actual uh, image here by just clicking on that circle and dragging out. And then I'm actually going to turn the sprite uh, 90 degrees like we did our player. So over here on transform, I'm going to hit rotation, negative 90. That way he's looking to the right as well. All right, because we're being lazy and we're going to use look at and I just want him to look the right direction to begin with. So, for the enemy, over here now in the main level scene, uh, we're going to right click and we're going to save branch as scene. And I will save it just as enemy, like so. I'll go ahead and open the scene clapper, open up the enemy, and now we're going to add a script. Um, again, everything should be the same. I'm going to check off template. Uh, GD script, inherits from character body 2D, enemy.gd is the script name. Perfect. So down here, the first thing I always do is I give it a class name. I'm just going to call it enemy. And I have noticed that when I do this and then I like save the script in the future, uh, I will sometimes get errors saying that like I'm overriding um, an existing like type or class or whatever. Uh, I, think, I think that's just an alpha 12 thing. Uh, but anyways, so with our enemy, we can go ahead and define like what properties or variables we want on it. Well, first of all, we know that the enemy is going to need health. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to kill it, right? And the health, I'll just make a float, and we'll say 100.0. We'll give it 100 health. And then we're also going to need a speed so it can actually move around. Uh, and that's going to be a float as well. And I'm going to set that to 200. We'll see how that turns out. And then finally, we're going to need a reference to our player, OK? Now there are ways we can get uh, a reference to the player in kind of a global scope so we can use it at all times, no matter where, without having to query for it. Um, but we haven't talked about uh, singletons and signals really yet, so we're not gonna do that yet. Instead, what we're gonna do is we are going to make uh, a group. And the way groups work, if I come over to the enemy, the way groups work, if we click on node, whoop, make sure we have enemy selected, and then click on node, we have two panels here, signals and groups. We're not gonna pay attention to signals yet. We're gonna to get to that in either the next video or the one after that. But for groups, we can actually tag the enemy with a, a word that we think means something, right? So we can put it into an enemy group. And that's gonna create a new group called enemy. And now we're gonna be able to use that to actually query things. We're gonna do the same thing for the player. So we're gonna go over to the player character and then I'm going to, groups is already open, so I'm just going to type player. Wonderful. So now what we can do is inside of our enemy script, I'll go ahead and control S to save. But inside of our enemy script, we can go ahead and call the physics process. And then down here in the physics process, we can make an if statement and say if, or I'm sorry, before we do that. 
we need somewhere to, we need a variable to store the actual player reference in. So I'm gonna make a variable called target and it's going to be of type player character. And we get the type here because player character has, I should really use the uh, script viewer here on the left. Um, because player character has this class name. That's the reason we get this, uh, this keyword here, if you will. The reason the system is aware that player character exists. So we're not gonna set it to anything though. And by default, that's going to mean that our target is going to be a null value. So we're essentially doing this, right? Um, so we're not going to set it to anything. It's going to be null at first, which means we need to check if we can even find the player before we do anything to the player or try to, like, chase him. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if target equals equals null. Now... Um, I forget what the term is, lit, lit, litiger, litigate, literatures, I forget what this is, but Godot does this, uh, where it will combine symbols that mean something into like a different symbol. So you're going to see equal equals, uh, when you type the equal sign twice, it will turn just this longer double line. Uh, and you're going to see here in a minute, we're going to type, uh, exclamation mark equals to mean not equal. And it's going to change that as well. So just be aware that that's what I'm typing and I'll tell you what I'm typing as I do it. So if target equals equals null, and this equals equals operator um, is an equality operator. It's checking to see, hey, is target null? Now in Godot, there is a built-in uh, is keyword. If I go ahead and end my if statement here and I'll just say pass, just so it won't error. But uh, we can do the is keyword, and this is more readable. Um, I will not fault you if you use is instead. I prefer, because I'm used to other programming languages as well, I prefer to use the double equal signs, okay? Basically means the same thing. So, uh, if target is equal to null, then we need to get the reference to that target. So we can do that here underneath the if statement by saying get tree, and this is gonna get the scene tree, right? So in main level, when the enemy script is saying get tree, it's going to get the entire tree. Enemy, player, all of it, okay? So back in the script viewer, we're gonna get tree, and then we're gonna say get nodes in group, okay? And then we can pass in a string. And now we gave player, um, as you can see over here, player character has a group named player. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to say player. And now this is going to search for the tree, and it's going to get all of the nodes. This is why this is plural. All the nodes that are in the group player. Now, obviously, we only have one player character, and that's fine. If you had multiple players, then uh, you'll have to deal with that a little bit differently. But the thing is, this is returning an array, and we're going to talk about arrays a little bit more here in just a moment. But this is returning a collection, a list of all the players in the scene. And although there's just one, it's going to turn it into an array of just one element, where there's one player character. So, to make this a little bit more clear, if I were to say var uh, target, nope, sorry. We're going to set it to target. So if I were to say target is equal to get tree, uh, get nodes in group, we're still going to have an error. Cannot assign a value of type array to a target of type player character. And the reason for that is this is an array. This is not a player character yet. We need to open up the array and get the first result, which is going to be our only player character, right? And the way we do that with arrays is we do brackets and then we type a zero. Now, don't run away just yet. I know this looks really funny. Let me explain what's happening here. So an array in Godot, and I'm going to go ahead and create a ready function so that um, I can demonstrate this. My array example. And I'll just make a very quick function called my array example. Okay, 
So here in my array example, we're going to create an array. How do you create an array? Well, just like any other variable, we could create a array variable by saying uh, var. I'm going to call it array. I don't know if this is, I think array in Godot has to be capitalized for it to be a keyword. So I think we're safe to call this array. Uh, I don't recommend calling it that regardless, but we're going to say uh, var array and the type is going to be capital array. And then here in brackets, I'm going to put what the array is holding a reference to, in our case, player character. And now we've created an array of player characters, a list of player characters. Now, this is what we're getting back from this get nodes in group, okay? So why the brackets and the zero? Well, if I convert this array into a string array, I can go ahead and assign it. And the way we assign an array is I can do more brackets and then for every element I want to add an array, uh, I can type it and separate it with a comma. Now, as it stands, this is creating an empty array. Um, so this is creating a list with nothing in it, okay? But now we're gonna create a list of, and we'll call the array names. We're gonna make a list of names. I'm gonna say Josh, I'm gonna come over, I'm gonna do a comma, James, come over, do a comma, and Liam, sure. So what we're saying is, hey, these three elements are a list, an array, and I want to store them in the variable name names. So that's what we have. We have this collection of strings, but in order to get them out, we have to tell the array, if we just wanna get one of them out, we have to tell the array what position we want to get an element from. And the way arrays work is it doesn't start, instead of being like, this is element one, because it's the first one, and this is element two, and this is element three. Instead, the way an array works is it counts from zero. It's zero based, meaning instead of one, two, three, we're looking at zero, one, two. So when I want to get the name Josh, for instance, and print it to the uh, screen, I have to say names, which is the variable name, brackets, to tell it, hey, I want to access the array, and then tell it the position of the element I want to get. In our case, if we want to get Josh, it starts counting at zero, and Josh is the first one, so we'll type zero. And I'm gonna comment all of this out for just a moment on the physics process. Uh, Control K. I'm going to hit Control S and then go back to the main level. I'm going to move the enemy just over a little bit so we can see it a little bit better. And when we press play, we're going to see that the ready function is going to uh, get called when this script and this node activates. And then we're going to pull out Josh from this array. Josh, down there. And to prove that a little bit more, if we wanted to get James, because we start counting at zero, zero, one. So we'll do names one. And we pr press play and we'll see James, okay? So that's how arrays work. We can do Liam to be a completionist real quick. Liam, that's how arrays work. They are simply storing a list of data types and then we are able to access them by calling the location of the element in the array starting with zero, not one, okay? So, all that to say, and I'll hit Control K again to uncomment, when I'm saying get tree, get nodes in group, player zero here, what I'm saying is I'm gonna search the tree, I'm going to get all the nodes in the group player, which is only player character, and because player character is the only one here, it's still gonna store it in array and then it's going to be the only element in the array, so it's, of course, the first element. So we're going to get it by doing zero. It's the same as us creating an array with only Josh in it. And then trying to call print names zero here, okay? That's how arrays work. Now, I can get rid of my example. I can get rid of this ready function. And there we go. So let's see here. Uh, this is only going to be one line. And what I'm saying is, like, if the target doesn't exist, then I want to find the target, which is going to be my player, and I want to assign it to target. 
because it's only one line, I'm gonna put it on the same line. Uh, there are people that have like moral objections to doing this. Um, if you need to put it on the next line under and indent one, by all means do so. I typically, if it's just gonna be one line, put it to the, like beside it. Okay, so now if the target's null, we're gonna set the target by getting the player and getting the first player we have in the list that comes back. Okay, so next we need to say, hey, if the target's not null, we want to do something, okay? Because it is entirely possible, uh, technically speaking, that this does not return a player. Um, I know we have one right here, but like if you weren't like doing an operation on something as important as the player, which is where the character is going to be, if you were like in the player script, for instance, and you were looking for the first enemy, but there were no enemies on the screen, this isn't going to give you anything. Okay. Um, it's not going to set the target to anything. It's going to be null still. So we need to kind of guard against that a little bit by saying if target is not null. And we do that with an exclamation mark followed by an equal sign. And like I said, Godot is going to change uh, that symbol to not equals. It's fine. If it's not equal to null, then we're going to do something. And what we want to do is going to be very similar to how we moved our uh, player character. But if the target's not null, then all we want to do is set the velocity of the enemy equal to and now we're going to say our position direction to target uh, position. Okay? And what this is saying is our velocity or the direction we should be heading is going to be equal to the our position from our position, the direction to the target, which is our player. So it's drawing a line between our enemy and our player and saying, okay, that's the velocity, that's the direction I'm heading, let's do that. Okay, now we can multiply it by speed, the speed variable we created, to actually give it uh, movement speed, so it's not just moving like one or two pixels or moving sporadically across the uh, screen there. And then finally, we can actually use move and slide, just like we did in the player, and this is going to set the enemy in motion. It's gonna chase the player. Uh, we can go ahead and play. I'll save, we'll play. And we can see that the enemy is following the player. Now the enemy's not rotating towards us and we can fix that really easily by just putting under move and slide, look at, and then I'm gonna do position. There we go. Do, do, do. And there's that error I get occasionally, the parse error, class name enemy hides a global script class. I'm pretty sure it's saying that I'm overriding myself. I don't think this is a legitimate error. Okay, so now if we play, and we're looking at the, our player's global position, the enemy now faces us. Awesome. So that is enemy movement complete. Now in the next video, we're going to talk about uh, how to damage the enemy and get the projectile to actually harm them, uh, how to destroy the enemy, and overall, like, really start building a game out of what all the pieces we've created so far. This has been a dev named Josh, and I'll see you next time.